Okay, let's t- talk about one of the most challenging things. Mm-hmm. One, one of the things I unfortunately am very afraid of being human, allegedly. You wrote an essay on death and consciousness in which you write a note. Certainly the fear of death has been one of the greatest driving forces in the history of thought and in the formation of the character of civilization. And yet it is under acknowledged. The great book on the subject, The Denial of Death by Ernest Becker deserves a reconsideration. I'm Russian, so I have to ask you about this. What's the role of death in life? See, you would have enjoyed coming to our house because uh, <laughs> my wife is Russian and we also awesome. have we have a piano of such spectacular qualities you wouldn't you would have freaked out if you played the classical piano. But anyway, yeah. let, we'll let all that go. So um, the context in which I, I remember that essay, uh, sort of, this was from maybe the 90s or something. Yeah. And um, I used to publish in a journal called the Journal of Consciousness Studies because I was, I was interested in these endless debates about consciousness and science, uh, which uh, certainly continue today. Mm-hmm. And... I was interested in how the fear of death and the denial of death played into different philosophical approaches to consciousness. Mm-hmm. Because I uh, I think on the one hand, uh, the sort of sentimental school of dualism, meaning the feeling that there's something apart from the physical brain, some kind of soul or something else, is obviously motivated in a sense by a hope that that whatever whatever that is will survive death and continue. And that's a very core aspect of a lot of the world religions. Not all of them, not not really, but, you know, uh, most of them. Um, The thing I noticed is that the the opposite of those, which might be the sort of hardcore, no, the brain's a computer and that's it, in a sense, we're motivated in the same way with a remarkably similar chain of, 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 uh, of arguments, which is, no, uh, the brain's a computer and I'm going to figure it out in my lifetime and upload it, upload myself and I'll live forever. <laughs> uh. That's interesting. Yeah, that's, so, that's that's like the implied thought, right? Yeah, and so it's kind of this. In a funny way, it's it's the same thing. It, it, it's uh, um, it's peculiar that you to notice that these people who would appear to be opposites in character <laughs> and yeah. cultural references and uh, uh, and in their ideas actually are remarkably similar. And, and and to 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 an incredible degree, the sort of hardcore uh, computationalist idea of, about uh, the brain has turned into medieval Christianity. With together, like there's the there are the people who are afraid that if you have the wrong thought, you'll piss off the super AIs of the future who will come back and zap you, and and all that stuff. Yeah, uh, it's like it's really it's really turned into medieval Christianity all over again. Uh, this is so the Ernest Becker's idea that death. The fear of death is the warm at the core, which is like that. That's the that's the core motivator of everything we see humans have created. The question is if that fear of mortality is somehow core, is like a prerequisite. Mm. Uh, so to what you what you just you just moved across this vast cultural chasm. Uh, that separates me from most of my colleagues in a way, and I can't answer what you just said on the level without yes. this huge deconstruction. Yes. Should I do it? Yes, what's the chasm? Okay. Let us travel across this vast okay, chasm. Okay, I don't believe in AI. I don't think there's any AI. There's just algorithms. We make them, we control them. Now, uh, they're tools, they're not creatures. Now, yes. th- this is something that rubs a lot of people the wrong way, and don't I know it. When I was young, my main mentor was Marvin Minsky, who's the principal author of the computer as creature rhetoric that we still use. Uh, He was the first person to have the idea at all, but he certainly populated the AI culture with most of its tropes, I would say, uh, because a lot of the stuff people will say, oh, did you hear this new idea about AI? And I'm like, yeah, I heard it in 1978. Sure. Yeah, I remember that. (laughs) So Marvin was really the person. And uh, Marvin and I used to argue all the time about the stuff because I always rejected it. And of all of his 
um, of all of his, uh, I, I wasn't formally his student, but I, uh, I worked for him as a researcher, but of, of all of his students and student-like people, <laughs> of his young adoptees, um, I think I was the one who argued with him about this stuff in particular, and he loved it. Yeah, I would have uh, loved to hear that conversation. It was fun. Did you ever converge to a place? Oh, no, no. So the, the very last time I saw him, he was quite frail, and, and uh I, I was in, uh, in in Boston, and I was going to the old house in Brookline, his amazing house. And one of our mutual friends said, hey, listen, Marvin's so frail. Don't do the argument with him. <laughs> Don't argue about AI. Yeah. You know? And so I said, but Marvin loves that. And so I showed up, and he's like, you know, he was frail. He looked up, and he said, are you ready to argue? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's such an amazing person for that. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> it's hard to summarize this because it's decades of stuff. The first thing to say is that nobody can claim absolute knowledge about whether somebody or something else is conscious or not. Uh, th this is all a matter of faith. And in fact, um, I think the whole idea of faith needs to be updated. So it's not about God, but it's just about stuff in the universe. We, we have faith in each other being conscious. And then, um, I used to frame this as a thing called the circle of empathy in my old papers. And then um, it turned into a thing for the animal rights movement, too. I noticed Peter Singer using it. I don't know if it was coincident or, but, but anyway, we there's this idea that you draw a circle around yourself and the stuff inside is more like you, might be conscious, might be deserving of your empathy, of your consideration, and the stuff outside the circle isn't. Mm -hmm. And um, outside the circle might be a rock <laughs> or. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so, uh, and that circle is fundamentally based on faith. Well, like Your faith no, in no, what it, is and what isn't. It, the thing about the circle is it can't be pure faith. It also has, it's also a pragmatic decision, and this is where things get complicated. Mm -hmm. If you try to make it too big, you suffer from incompetence. If mm -hmm. you say, I don't want to kill a bacteria, I will not brush my teeth, I don't know, like, what do you do? Yeah. Like, you know, like, there's a there's a competence question where you do have to draw the line. People who make it too small become cruel. People are so clannish and political and so worried about themselves ending up on the bottom of society that they are always ready to gang up on some designated group. And so there's always these people who are being trying. We're always trying to shove somebody out of the circle. Mm -hmm. And so, so, aren't you shoving AI outside the circle? Well, give me a second. All right. So, so <laughs> there's a pragmatic consideration here. Yes. And so, uh, and and uh, the the biggest questions are probably fetuses and animals lately, but AI is getting there. Now, with AI, I think. Uh, and I've had this discussion so many times. People would say, but aren't you afraid if you exclude AI, you'd be cruel to some consciousness? And then I would say, well, if you include AI, you make yourself, you you exclude yourself from being able to be a good engineer or designer, and so you, you're facing incompetence immediately. So, like, I really think we need to subordinate algorithms and be much more skeptical of them 